May your next life be blessed. May your next life be blessed. May your next life be blessed. In this week's episode of Tales of the Walking Dead, in a road trip story, a reclusive prepper abandons his bunker in search of a female prepper from his past. Along the way, he meets an unlikely ally who is his polar opposite. They team up in an effort to find their lost loved ones. Hello ladies and gentlemen boys and girls, welcome back to Movie Mistakes. And today we're going to show you some goofs we found in Tales of the Walking Dead entitled, Evie slash Joe. This video will include spoilers so be forewarned. Enjoy. The mistake that I see he made in this scene is that they didn't show whether or not he checked the cameras. So we can safely assume that he probably forgot to do that. Which resulted in his dog Gilligan having to come to his defense. So this is why his dog died. Also, why wouldn't he have a place inside the bunker for the dog to use the bathroom? When he takes the dog out to go pee, he puts his best friend down and almost immediately notices that something is wrong. From the time it took him to realize something was not right between the time that I'm dead were close enough to do any harm, they both could have made it back to the bunker and more than enough time. In the scene where he throws the bookshelf along with the books, notice that the bookshelf falls over next to the bed. We can still see it in the shot. But if you focus your attention on the clip to the right you will notice that the bookshelf is no longer there. Undoubtedly they moved it in between shots, but the reason is unclear. But this is a mistake nonetheless. Whoa, 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 stop it! You want me to trust you? Put that away, you nosy bitch! I fully understand that he's upset that she's going through his personal things. But to call her that word is pretty stupid considering she has a gun and he is handcuffed. She could easily put a bullet in his head and drive off with his bike and all of his belongings. I would think you would be a little smarter than that. Why? What am I gonna find in here? Do you have friends waiting for me along the route? When she questions him about having friends waiting for her along the route makes no sense. This is because she is the one who popped his tires and took him hostage. So how would he be able to coordinate an attack on her when he didn't even know she existed? Plus she is the one giving him directions on which way to go. For mistake number 6, this one was pretty obvious to anyone who paid attention during this episode. There were several points during their trip together that he could've easily disarmed her. As you can see here her head is turned to her right as she watches the sunset. And it is at this point he could've easily grabbed the gun and turned it on her. He decided not to do so because I'm assuming he is enjoying her company although it wasn't planned. She also calls him out on this later on in the episode as well. You want to be a truth teller? Then be honest with yourself. We both know that even if you thought the gun was loaded, there were a lot of opportunities for you to get away. But you didn't want to because you're lonely, Joe! Keep telling yourself that. You're the pathetic one! 7. Although I understand the need to have a campfire, for warmth, and light. But I never could understand in most of these post-apocalyptic shows or movies where they have this raging campfire, in the middle of the night. Yes, I know that they need to keep warm somehow, but there's nothing wrong with starting a little fire warming up and then when you're ready to turn in for the night, put the fire out so that zombies or human predators won't know your location. In the scene after Joe's bike is stolen, which was his fault by the way, he and Elise are walking to their destinations with the goat that was left for them. In the shot from a distance you can see that Joe is standing in the sun, but if you turn your attention to the clip on the right you can see he is actually standing in the shade now. I believe this has to do with lighting. If Joe was standing in the shade from a distance it would be hard to see his features, but on the other hand if he was standing in the sun on this medium shot then he would look washed out. Great decision by the filmmakers, but a mistake nonetheless. Fuck you. This part was the most confusing to me. So when Joe reaches his destination Sandra opens the hatch to let him in to protect him from the zombies. Nothing unusual about that if she was happy to see him which we all know that she isn't. Why? 
Are you here, Joe? To find you! I don't believe you! She actually believes that he is trying to kill her and take her bunker over. So if she believed that he wasn't there to see her and be with her, why would she open the hatch to let him in in the first place only to try to kill him? This is what always drove me crazy about slasher movies or TV shows. When someone is defending themselves and they hit their assailant, they strike once and either stand around waiting for the person to regain their footing or run away. <laughs> Joe is twice the size of Sandra, plus he continuously works out and is in great shape. Once he hit her and knocked her backward into the sink he should have continued to strike her until he rendered her unconscious. I understand that he may not be a violent person by nature, but this is a life or death situation. It's obvious that she wants to kill him, so I believe that he should return the favor. Plus that would be a fantastic bunker for him to ride out the apocalypse. So in this scene, Elise has found Sandra's bunker and is talking to her about Joe. Sandra offered her a brownie that Elise has taken just one bite of and sat down on the table. If you compare the two shots on the right and the left, the brownie changes position and size. I don't believe she is fast enough to nibble and put it down in between shots, so I would have to chalk this up to a goof. And you've been lying this whole time. So far final mistake, Elise has found Joe tied up in Sandra's bunker. Notice when Sandra charges at them she has no blood anywhere on her. But when the camera switches over to Joe he grabs the knife from Elise and throws it at Sandra. Immediately after the butcher knife strikes Sandra in the chest we can see that there is blood everywhere especially on her mouth where there was none previously. So what did you think of these cool movie mistakes? Let us know in the comment section below which was your favorite. Also, let us know what you'd like to see next. And as always remember to click subscribe button now. We'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with us here at Movie Mistakes, we'll see you next time.